Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be talking about definitions of intersecting parallel and skew lines. So let's get started with the following do now. Transversal line GH intersects line segments AB and CD as shown in the figure below. If the measure of angle BGH is equal to 3x minus 25 and measure of angle AGH is equal to 2x minus 15, then number one, calculate the value of x. Secondly, calculate the measure of angle AGH and the measure of angle BGH. And thirdly, if the measure of angle GHD is equal to x plus 29, what is the angled measure of angle GHD? So let's get started with number one. How do we calculate the value of x here? Well, if you look at the diagram, what do we know for sure? Well, we know that angle AGH and angle BGH are supplementary because they're adjacent angles and they form a linear pair. So therefore we can write that angle AGH and angle BGH are supplementary. The reason is if the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are opposite rays, then the angles are supplementary. Then we know that measure of angle AGH plus the measure of angle BGH is equal to 180 due to the definition of supplementary angles. Then we can finally substitute in terms of x. So here we have 2x minus 15 is equal to 3x minus 25 by the substitution postulate. And then finally we obtain x equal to 44. So that is the answer to problem number one. How do we now calculate the measure of angle AGH and measure of angle BGH? We simply back substitute. So here we obtain a measure of angle AGH of 73 degrees by the substitution postulate. And similarly, we get the measure of angle BGH to be a 107 degrees. Then for problem number three, if measure of angle GHD is X plus 29, we can find the measure of angle GAD to be 73 degrees also because of the substitution postulate because we substituted x equal to 44 into the expression. Now, if we look at the answers, there's something interesting. For example, if you, we look at measure of angle AGH and measure of angle GHD, they both have the same angle measure. So basically we're saying that in the diagram angle AGH, which is here, that this angle here, and we know that angle GHD, which is this angle here, both of these angles are equal in measure. Now, if we have two lines that are cut by a transversal, and then we have these alternate interior angles that are equal in measure or they're congruent, then what can we say about lines AB and CD? Well, we can say it that these two lines are actually parallel and that's the symbol for parallel. So that's the introduction to parallel lines. Let's now define parallel lines. How would you define it? So here's the definition of parallel lines. Two coplanar lines are parallel if and only if the two lines do not intersect. Now it's very important to state the term coplanar because here we're defining parallel lines to be in the same plane. Because when they're not coplanar, but we're talking about space, then we have another type of lines that are not parallel, but they do not intersect as well. Now the definition of skew lines, that's the one we're talking about when they're in space. So for example, two lines are skew, if and only if the two lines are not coplanar. So skew lines are neither parallel nor intersecting. So how's that possible? Well, in this case, the two lines cannot be in the same plane, but they have to be in different planes, right? And here's an example. For example, you can have a line to be in one plane here. For example, let's call this line L. And then you can have this line M to be on a different plane. The two lines, they're not parallel, they don't intersect, and therefore they're called skew lines. So the question is, how would you define, if possible, parallel, perpendicular, and skew planes? 
draw a sketch and write down a possible definition for each of these three conditions. So let's get started with parallel planes. So we define parallel lines to be coplanar, right? But what about planes? Well, it turns out that the definition of planes is a little bit different. Two planes are parallel if and only if the two planes do not intersect, and that's it. Now, we don't use the term coplanar because these are planes and they cannot be coplanar, right? So they're parallel in space. The reason why we don't write that they do not intersect in space, because here we're talking about Euclidean geometry, uh, which already assumes a three-dimensional uh, space in this case. Then we have perpendicular planes, which are defined as follows. Two planes are perpendicular if and only if the two intersecting lines, one on each plane, form a right angle. So these lines are called the normal, which means that they're actually perpendicular, right? So not only they're perpendicular to each other, but they're also perpendicular to the line of intersection, right? So for example, here, that's perpendicular, and this one is perpendicular as well. That's how you define the normal. So it happens that they also have to be perpendicular to each other so that it meets the criteria for perpendicular planes. Now, what about skew planes? Basically, planes that do not intersect and planes that are not even parallel. Well, it turns out that in Euclidean geometry, such planes do not exist. Okay, so now that we have covered the basics for planes and lines, let's get into more details how planes interact with each other. Let's say that you have two parallel planes cut by a third plane. Then first of all, what is the object created when planes intersect? Well, as you can see here, the intersection here is actually a line. It's kind of like when you have a line intersecting another line, you have a point. But for planes, when two planes intersect, you have a line here. And here we also have a line. So what can we say about these two lines here if these two planes are parallel? First of all, let me denote the symbol for parallel. So let's say you put a line here and a line here on the plane. Uh, the symbol for parallel is this, okay? So you can put um, arrows like this to denote that they're parallel. Well, what can we say about the lines of intersection? Well, it turns out that the lines of intersection also must be parallel. And that is a theorem. If two parallel planes are cut by a third plane, then the lines of intersection are parallel. Now, since we have a theorem here, it means that it actually can be proven, okay? Again, our hypothesis is two parallel planes cut by a third plane, and we want to prove the conclusion that the two lines of intersections are parallel. So in order to do this, we first need to set up the geometric figures using any points or label of any lines. So let's say we have the following scenario here. Given plane P intersects plane M at line AB and plane N at line CD. And also we know that plane M is parallel to plane N. How do we prove that line AB is parallel to line CD? So it turns out that the most convenient way to prove this is by contradiction or using an indirect proof. So in an indirect proof, what do we assume first? The opposite of the conclusion. So let's assume that line AB is not parallel to line CD. Now, if we assume that line AB is not parallel to line CD, then what must be happening at some point? Well, if two lines here, and let's draw this out. So let's say you have two lines here, that they're not parallel. At some point, they will intersect here somewhere very, very far away, okay? So let's write this down. Now, we also know that uh, line AB and CD are on plane M and N respectively. So if they intersect at point E, that means that E is going to be a point on plane M and also on plane N. So here we can state that since E is a point of line CD, then it is a point of plane N. And since E is a point of line AB, then it is also a point of plane M. We're also given that 
m is parallel to n and planes m and n have therefore no points in common. But according to our proof here, according to our initial assumption, if we look at these two steps here, right, uh, we know that E is a point in plane N and E is a point in plane M, right? That's the assumption that uh, line AB is not parallel to CD. Now, if E is a point in both planes M and N, then uh, planes M and N are not parallel. But again, we stated as a given that M and N are parallel. Well, guess what? That is actually a contradiction right here. Since we reached a contradiction, we can say that our initial assumption is actually false. And therefore, line AB must be parallel to line CD. Okay, so that's basically it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button and subscribe for more upcoming interesting videos.